Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the February 27th, um, 2013 school board meeting. Just to let you know that we were in executive session discussing personnel issues. Um, we will be going back in there to uh, discuss more personnel issues with no, this is what I want, no um, action, to be action taken. taken. Thanks. And let's see, we are being videotaped. And I think we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll start with introductions. I'm just going to let you know Lynn Lenhart is not here tonight. Um, so we'll start with Kate. Michael Cooper. Jody Monroe. Tom Douglas. Diane Stever. Matt Downey. Laura Bierman. And Charmaine with the singer. Judy Kehoe. And also to welcome to our participation in government students. Um, if we go past 9 o'clock, we will take a break because um, you guys have to come and sign out. Okay. Did I get everything? It feels like it's been a few weeks. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, okay. Is there any visitors on an agenda item that would like to speak? Approval of minutes. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes of the February 6, 2013 regular board meeting? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that carries. Student Senate report. Oh, great. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that one oh, behind you. You can always you can adjust. Read <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you can adjust. <laughs> All right. Well, the students at the day we've been working on the snowball, obviously, which has been postponed recently, and we're actually deciding to use this time to actually like change up the whole snowball process. So this time we're thinking of doing all of the underclassmen wearing white and turning it kind of into like the glow dance, which was really successful. And we're gonna have the seniors in black so they kind of stand out and have some incentive to come. And we might actually, we're thinking about having the seniors actually pay like a little bit less if they like wear black and participate just so they can have more incentive to come because we decided that if the seniors come, then they, other grades will have more incentive to come as well. Um, after that, we've been talking about We've been talking about the, sorry, <laughs> nervous. <That's okay. laughs> I'm nervous. Um, <laughs> but we've been talking about, oh, having a seniors ball, which is instead of the senior ball, we've been have, thinking about having a seniors ball for like the elderly people in our community, just to get the community to come here and experience what Bethlehem has to offer. So we think that'll be a good idea to bring the community and also like the elderly people together in our community. And we think that would just be really nice to do. Um, also, we were thinking of having this like massive kind of thing where we bring all the schools together, like elementary school, middle school, and high school. We just discussed this today in our meeting. And it's where we would have like a little run kind of thing, and it's almost kind of like a field day for like everybody to come together, maybe at like the town park or something, and we thought that would be really fun too. So, but we, have, we haven't really gone over it much with that. It was just an idea today. And after that, we talked about, oh, we have dodgeball coming up. That's going to be soon, because we've been thinking about doing two dodgeball tournaments <laughs> instead of just one, because the dodgeball is always really successful, and everybody gets really into it and involved. And it really brings the school together, and it's really fun. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what we've been doing. Sorry Megan and Jamie couldn't be here today. That's OK. And your name just? Drew Perry. Oh, Drew. OK. okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Drew, a question for you. So with the snowball dance, is it going to be a formal dance still? Or if you Actually, do we're thinking white? to make it more informal, because we've done it formal in the past. And over the last few years, we've had attendance go way down. So we're thinking of using the time that it's been postponed to really try to change it up and <coughs> get some enthusiasm. Well, that's good to know. So I don't have to go buy formal white dress to send for the night in the 11th grade. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's I, March 9th, right? Mm -hmm. OK. 
Um, I just have a note that I love the idea of the field day, and a lot of the elementary school principals are in the back row. So as you develop that idea, those are the people um, I would assume you'd be wanting to talk with. Yeah, absolutely. We haven't really come up with any right, right, real right. concrete stuff, so I don't really have much to talk about. Right, right, but just, but just in the future, the we'll definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. be talking with Student Center. Great. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, superintendent's report. Uh, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Board of Education, uh, it's kind of very much uh, appropriate that I start with this one first, but I'd like to congratulate one of our students for being selected to attend the League of Women Voters of New York State Students Inside Albany Conference. And uh, this will be April 14th to the 17th uh, of this year. Uh, this student was chosen from a number of excellent applicants and will be representing Albany County throughout the conference. This symposium will provide the student as well as other students from New York State an opportunity to witness state government in action while participating in learning how to make one's voice heard in the political process. Uh, what's really nice is the person was also presenting for our student senate tonight, <laughs> Mr. Drew Perry. So, Drew, congratulations. Hey, Drew, we have a email pin for you. <laughs> we can just embarrass you a little more. <laughs> you had perfect timing. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So additionally, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to inform the community as well as the board. Uh, we started an initiative with the Dignity for All Student Act uh, for the current year, and the high school administration along with the middle school uh, worked on an opening uh, start of the year presentation and assembly for the community. They're continuing that avenue and activity as uh, on March 7th at 7 p.m., we are inviting uh, individual members of the community for a special assembly at the high school to partake in Rachel's Challenge. Rachel's Challenge is a program that equips students and adults to combat bullying and fears of isolation and despair by creating culture of kindness and compassion. The program uh, brought to BCHS through the generosity of the Bethlehem Opportunities Unlimited and the BCHS Student Senate is based on the writings and life of 17-year-old Rachel Scott who was the first student killed at Columbine High School in 1999. Rachel left a legacy of reaching out to those who were different, who were picked on by others, and who were new at her school. No RSVP is needed uh, to the attend the event. Uh, again, it will be March 7th at 7 p.m. in the auditorium, and everyone is encouraged to attend. I've had the pleasure of seeing this program at numerous high schools throughout the state, and it is truly a moving experience. Um, it really is something that leaves a lasting legacy. So I would encourage the students who are here to reach out and thank the Student Senate, as well as the BOU for providing some of these opportunities uh, for our community as well as our students as we deal with making sure that we have tolerance and acceptance of all. In addition, ladies and gentlemen, we have several uh, activities that have been going on in the sports field uh, throughout the past uh, month. Specifically tonight, our girls varsity basketball team is, uh, will be participating or are already in the middle of participating at uh, Hudson Valley Community College in a semifinal sectional game and we wish them well. Also, Gunner Zemring with boys swimming is moving on to the states at Webster High School in Rochester. Patrick DeVoe with boys bowling and Jenna Lemke with girls bowling are also moving on to state competition. Uh, Sam Talon, Grace Smith, Arnell Thomas are all going to states in the girls indoor track at Cornell University. And Steve Booker for boys indoor track will also be attending the state competition. And Tori Birkin was selected as the Dunkin' Donuts Athlete of the Week and made the Huck Finn Scholarship Tournament. These are some examples of our students excelling in their areas of extracurricular activities and our academics certainly are in the area of being seen as excellent in the area. So we wanted to offset that a little with this month's report. I know there are several uh, areas, but one of the areas of acknowledgement is always to our military academies. Gerald Fitz McDonough was just accepted to the West Point. He is an Ellesmere graduate who attends at this time LaSalle. 
So I'm not sure if this is the kind of news that the board is looking for, but I'm sure you also extend uh, the heartfelt thanks and gratitude to Gerald's commitment to attending West Point. Uh, he has also six other BC siblings that attend here. So we'd like to congratulate Fitz as well. Uh, and that concludes my report at this point for some of the happenings in the school district. And we want to appreciate everyone coming out tonight. Thank you. Okay. Do, do I have one question for sure. Dr. For the Rachel's Challenge, um, do you have any sense of what age, is there an age appropriate, is it for high schools, middle schools, or could elementary kids go? Have you, so having seen the program, do you? They, they can run the program at every age level. Uh, predominantly middle school uh, has a specific type of program and high school uh, they also have a set series because they go into a little more details Mr. Landry is back here as well Mr. Landry would you like to respond a little of how that program is going to be set up one comment um, I was at the girls first round basketball game and and they were great and the students at it were great and um, the, the girls played good and especially with mr. DeMeo being here the, the one the one issue that I think I had and it's not specific to that team it's in general is that that score was completely lopsided from the beginning of the game until the end and the kids didn't come off the bench till the last four minutes that were not starters in that game and we won that game by 49 points. <laughs> and we had four times the score that they had at halftime. And I am all for winning. <laughs> I'm as competitive as you can get. And if it's 38-37, I would have all my starters in. There's no question about it. But I don't think that's the message we want to be sending, to run up a score and let the kids that don't start sit the bench. We knew we were going to win the first round. <laughs> those kids should have been playing. <laughs> and in the final game, I think those kids know they're not playing. And, and I would hope that the administration and you, no, I'm not punishing this. I'm just, all, this happens against all sports. But I think it's something we got to be really mindful of. I don't like it in the pros. <laughs> I, I certainly don't like it in Little League. <laughs> and, and I think it shows a lack of class. To, to do that, and I don't want Bethlehem represented like that at all. Okay, anything else? Are we doing board reports now? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Board of Education uh, report? Yep. Yeah. Do you have anything else, Kate, or anybody? No. Uh, I have a couple of things. Okay. Um, I saw Dr. Douglas there. I went to the Slingland Science Fair, I hadn't been to an elementary science fair in a couple of years, and realized how much, uh, how much fun they can be. Um, there were a lot of solar systems uh, represented in the whole idea of uh, w my husband's a polymer scientist, so we talk about viscosity at home, and there was a lot of a number of vis viscous experiments, and I, it was a very complex co uh, concept. I enjoyed seeing how kids were tackling it. I got fingerprinted by a young woman. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, so uh, that was uh, enjoyed the Slingland staff and faculty and their work in getting that together, and the parents. I was at the uh, quarterfinal, semifinal. Uh, I wish the women good luck tonight. Um, I'm visiting the lab school on Monday. That had to be rescheduled because of, I think, a previous snowstorm or something happened. <laughs> so um, if anyone wants to go on Monday, they should, I believe, contact um, uh, Mr. Smith or Mr. Landry. Um, but I will be going Monday morning. And lastly, I was um, contacted by the New York State Caucus of Black School Board uh, members to uh, submit presentation ideas for the NISPA conference in the fall. and. Uh, through some discussion, it looks like they are interested in me um, facilitating one on either uh, difficult dialogues, uh, promoting an environment for discussion of diversity by school boards, or the role of the school board in uh, fostering inclusive educational environments. I may be doing one or both of those, depending on how that all works out. So, okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
anyone else? And Lynn's not here, who's normally our... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I have an update to 40, 4339 with the 50 seconds left or so <laughs> for the girls' basketball. Okay. We are at presentation for a budget workshop. So I think, Tom, you're starting that? Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Board of Education. Uh, tonight is really scheduled for our budget presentation. And as we go through our budget presentations this evening, we want to talk about uh, a few items. First of all, we want to make sure that we recap as we go through because the budget is an evolving work in progress over the next several weeks, probably until about mid-April. Uh, no decisions have been made at this point. However, it is a process that information is gathered and gleaned throughout this uh, forum, and then input and discussions occur on a regular basis. Our next meeting as we go is one week from now, uh, on the 6th, and then the 20th, and then hopefully we will have a state budget that's been put into place to give our budget numbers a lot more uh, finality to the actual financial positions that we will have to look at going into 2013, 2014 school year. Uh, so we will do a brief recap each budget evening. Uh, tonight we're slating operation and maintenance as well as athletics review, and then just general discussion at the end as well as notification of future meetings. As we go through uh, tonight's uh, budget presentation, I'd like to remind everyone that these are just alternatives of where we are looking at right now as we start to more formalize the process over the coming weeks. Tonight, our first part of our presentation will be offered by our Chief Financial Officer, Ms. Judith Kiko, and then it will follow up by our Director of Operations and Maintenance, uh, Mr. Greg Nolte, and then sum up with our Director of Athletics, um, I just lost the name, I'm sorry. <laughs> John <laughs> DeVeo. <laughs> I'm looking at Melissa and I know she does a bulk of the work that we've been talking about, but I know John <laughs> will add his flair at the end, so I apologize for that. Uh, and then we'll come back for any questions by the board and everything else, so Ms. Keith. Thank you, Mr. This recap will be much briefer than the, I think, hour-long overview that we gave you at the last meeting. Um, but for those who haven't been attuned to every one of the workshops, we would like to give just a quick recap so that everybody is on the same page with us and brought up to date with our review on the budget. Um, one of the key items that we had discussed last time was the overview of our state aid, such as it stands with the governor's proposal um, for 2013-14 school year. And looking at the aid run, we talked about the um, adjustments to those estimates that we would need to do um, based on changes in our expenditure levels. Um, one of the key items that we highlighted um, is the high tax aid, where we have been at $951,000 for the last few years based on a formula change that came into this year's budget. We have lost about $655,000 based on that shift in the formula. So where we were hoping to be perhaps worst case scenario breaking even with the state aid, we in fact are below where we were at. Um, the loss of the high tax aid as well as reducing some of the expense based aids, um, most notably transportation because we're spending less in this current year. We have about an $875,000 budget to budget reduction in our state aid revenues. M Mrs. Keogh, can I ask you a question? Could you move that microphone just a little closer to your uh, upright a bit? Right. Okay. Thank you. I'm trying to reach and I know. like I'm a Gumby sorry. doll over here. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
this is a slide that had been um, made available um, by the New York State Council of School Superintendents when um, Dr. Timms had done his presentation a few weeks ago. Um, he highlighted each district's financial position relative to state aid. And this just recaps our change in our basic state aid levels. From 08 09, we were at about $18.2 million. And based on the proposal that we're looking at this year, that has dropped down to 15.7. Again, a combination of a reflection of the economy and then the gap elimination adjustments that have been part of our budget discussions. Um, this change in the state aid is close to a 12% reduction for us over this time period, which is, of course, a, a very significant um, amount of reduced aid for us to be absorbing at a time when ordinarily our expenditures would be increasing. Um, and as you know, we were able to tie our budgets together over this time period by making reductions and changes in how we operate our programs. Um, the gap elimination adjustment certainly is not an insignificant figure. Um, again, this slide has come from the information from Dr. Timms, but we were at about $10.4 million less in state aid um, through the current fiscal year, and it's at about $3.9 million. Um, the good news is that it was partially restored in the governor's proposal. It was just under $100,000 that was added back into that particular formula. So. Um, that helped. We were certainly grateful to see that, and um, clearly we have a long way to go before we get back to even um, with that formula. One of the key points that we noted was if we had the gap elimination adjustment added back into our aid formulas, we would only be looking at about a, just over a $1 million shortfall even before using fund balance or even before considering any form of a levy increase. So it would be a dramatically different budget conversation for us. We would only need to raise taxes 1.78% with the baseline budget that we had presented in the prior work session um, compared to what we're looking at where we have um, foreshadowing here for the next slide. Oops. Well, we have a gap that needs to be closed. I'll get to that in two slides, apparently. Um, this is the calculation of, as you know, we're in a tax cap world. We're subject to a formula in determining how much is the maximum amount that we can levy and uh, still be subject to the 50% voter approval threshold. And based on going through that formula, the amount for the district for 13-14 is 3.64%. So although the board has not made any decisions as to what degree of tax levy um, will be part of this final budget as it is adopted, um, it's important just so that we have a baseline consideration that 364 is by formula um, the most that we can raise and still keep to that 50% threshold. Um, the calculation last year was the 2.94 percent. Um, it is a higher number this year, primarily driven by the increases in the teachers' retirement system rates. Um, that's the $736,000 item on there. Um, based on a, almost a 4 percent increase in that rate, um, we were able to get half of that, or 2 percent of the increase, um, factored into our tax cap calculation. Judy, so what you're saying there is that really the teacher's retirement system went by up by $1.45 million, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. And ERS went up as well. However, it only went up by 2%. Mm -hmm. And the tax cap calculation formula mm -hmm. only allows you to levy in excess of that 2% rate. So it's increasing and significantly, but we do not have the ability to include that as part of the increases in the tax cap calc. So, Judy, also just to clarify, the um, tax levy limit that you have on that first line, that's actually the true 2%? Um, no. The 2% is one line item within that formula. Okay, so there are the other factors. There's that brick and mortar factor that we okay. talked about that comes from um, tax and finance, which is based on the actual uh, new construction within the district. So that was like a .0041 factor. Um, remember that you also have to add in the changes in your payment in lieu of taxes <laughs> amounts. Um, so there are about okay. nine different add-ins or subtractions associated with this calculation. 
it might be a good idea to try and label that a little differently next time or something because it almost looks like that's the two percent figure you know maybe say um, I don't I, you know I don't know just so that people understand that that's not a straight two percent because that's what yeah that's, and in their clearly, head they think it's two percent right and that we've that has been the message that we've been right. trying to drive home right. since this legislation right. was passed <laughs> the media tends to report it as a two percent tax cap right it's not a two percent right. tax cap it is no. a tax cap based on a moderately formula. complex formula right. that will generate theoretically what you need as a growth in your levy to support your programs and is that why you call it the maximum tax levy limit Right. Yeah. So, so it's, yeah, but yeah. see that first line that yeah, says 56. tax levy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That and that, sense. I didn't choose these headers. This is what they're referenced oh, okay. as as part of the statute. So I was trying to be consistent with those descriptions. Okay. Trying right. to minimize confusion wherever possible, but. <laughs> Not in this world. <laughs> I can't work this with my left hand, apparently. There we go. Um, this just gives you um, a feel for the percent change in our budget to budget amounts from one year to the next over the last 10 years where you can see it was an average of 5.33% and then also the change in our tax levy over that same time period at 4.84%. With the baseline budget prior to any decisions as to possible reductions we were looking at a 2.76% increase in the budget to budget amounts this year. So still at a relatively low level um, out of necessity given our loss in our state aid numbers. Um, and the recent trend, you can see we've had very modest increases in the budget to budget amounts. We've in fact had a decrease in the 11-12 school year. Um, but the reason our tax levies have been higher is because of that loss in state aid. It's really um, state aid and tax levies as the major sources of revenue for all of our programs. The preliminary gap, including those assumptions in state aid um, based on the governor's run, not including any degree of tax increases or use of fund balance is at about $4.9 million. Recall last year this number was about $7.7 .7 million before any of those increases. So um, the good news is that the gap is decreasing. So we're making progress based on the decisions that had been made in prior years. As we go through these coming weeks reviewing the budget, what we're going to want to consider is how much of a tax levy um, will we find necessary. If we go to the 3.64%, which is the calculated amount, that would generate $2,154,000, which would lower that gap to about just under $2.8 million. If we use fund balance to the same extent we have in the past at $1,750,000, that would again lower it to about a $1,000,000, which means that that remaining gap will need to be closed with hopefully some restoration on state aid once the state budget is adopted um, and or a combination of program reductions that we will be reviewing. Each 1% in the tax levy amount is about $592,000. If the board went to say a 2% tax levy increase, that would lower that $2,154,000 by about $975,000. So almost another million dollars in combination of program reductions and or other revenue sources that would be needed in order to balance our budget. So not insignificant numbers, but just I always like for you to keep that kind of order of magnitude of how much each 1% of the tax levy would generate. Judy, can you um, also remind me um, the fund balance that you're predicting for the end of this year, including what you're, you budgeted to use this year, what do you predict for the end of this year the fund balance to be at? Um, crystal ball is showing that right. we're going to be at about a break even with our budget, which is right around the um, $8 million mark. I don't have that particular slide in here, but flat with last year's number, and that included the restricted components on fund balance as well. No, what do you expect the fund balance account or whatever you want to call it to be? That eight, That's the total that number okay. for the fund balance, but remember that includes your All restricted you reserves, your workers' yes. comp yes. reserve, the tax certiorari reserve, okay. um, the employee benefits accrued liability yes. reserve, etc. Um, the unrestricted portion, which yes. is the key number, yes. 
that, remember, has to be less than 4% of right. your budgeted amount as per state ed requirements. So we are still within that range. So we were at about 3.5%, 3.6% based on those projections. Okay. And Judy, by using that fund balance, what you're saying is you really have a, a gap that you will again have next year yes. without additional either tax revenue or state aid coming in. Yes. And so again, next year we have to plan on either 1.7 million in cuts or using an additional fund balance next year to balance right. whatever budget we come up with this year versus next yeah. year. Your fund balance is really one of those tools that you have to help get you through these rough patches fiscally when you're losing um, other sources of revenue. Um, but it really is a finite resource and you don't want to run that down to zero or negative because that has so many impacts um, not only to your cash flow and your ability to run the business of the school district it also affects your credit rating so anytime you're going out to the market for debt um, you're paying a higher interest cost for that so if you look at over the lifetime of many of the bonds that you might issue that could be a significant impact so it, it's really critical that you maintain that at a very healthy level so that you can meet your operating needs and maintain the best fiscal position. Okay. Okay. Any and that's questions? it for your quick recap, unless you have other questions for me. The question department is never closed, as you know. <laughs> um, at this point, I would like to turn it over to Greg Nolte, our Director of Facilities, who is going to give you a recap of his budget proposal um, for this coming year. Greg? Greg, before you start, the girls did win 44-40. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening, uh, Board of Education. Um, I kind of wanted to start with a, a, some rousing humor. Um, I uh, searched, the, searched the internet for some facility jokes or operations jokes and really didn't find anything. So That's like looking spare. for accounting jokes, Greg. Come on, if you're an engineer, I did find a lot of doing? lawyer jokes, but I won't go there. Um, okay, um, Onum's budget is the um, single cost center for, for anything facilities related. Um, Services such as uh, custodial um, are included within my budget. Um, maintenance services, um, all of my staff, um, my electricians, my heating, my ventilating, my air conditioning people, my grounds people, my athletic people, um, uh, electricians, delivery, all that stuff is, is as well included in my budget. Um, health and safety services are included uh, within the operations uh, budget. Um, all the utilities for the entire district, water, uh, electric and gas, natural gas, uh, that's included as well, uh, and capital projects, um, that's included uh, in the budget as well. Um, we still maintain about a million square feet of uh, buildings, uh, and those sit on about 260 acres of property, so it's, it's, it's a big endeavor. Um, um, uh, so I'm going to start with um, um, a statement, a very positive s a statement. Um, the Bethlehem Central School District Operations and Maintenance Department is the most cost-effective O&M department in the Suburban Council. Uh, this is of schools our size. At 5.83% of the district's overall budget, we are the lowest in the, uh, the Suburban Council. Um, this rec recognition didn't happen overnight. Uh, it came with a lot of uh, blood, uh, sweat, and tears. Um, 14 years of my tears. Um, <laughs> um, um, the proposed budget uh, for this year, the 13-14 school year, uh, for supplies, programs, contractual services, and equipment is about 7.5% than what we spent about six years ago. So, so basically, what, what does this mean? Uh, it means that you know, o m continues to operate leanly, even after our facilities grew about 30% uh, with the past bond. Uh, it means that o m is creative with staffing assignments. Uh, so we can uh, attempt to maintain cleaning standards of our staff and, and our community. Um, O&M's in-house um, maintenance staff uh, continues to do repairs uh, so we can avoid uh, costly uh, con 
tractor, uh, um, costly co uh, contractors coming into our facilities. Um, we continue to hold the line on utilities uh, with a number of endeavors. Um, and um, as well, it's, it's nice that my staff is always looking for better and more efficient ways uh, to do business here. So um, what is our budget process? Um, about three months ago, uh, myself, Ron Schalmerdine, Bob Court, and Elisa Peters, uh, we sit down around the conference table and we go through um, our budget, which is about 40 line items. And we go through line, by line item by line item. Uh, we look at cost trends, we look at what the district spent over the past three or four years, uh, what we anticipate through our crystal ball, what we might be spending next year, and we establish our budget that way. Some of these line items go up and, and some go down. Um, but overall, exclusives of salaries, the 13-14 budget is, is flatlined, okay? Um, and during this detailed review, um, there was an overall, what I'll call a, a netted overall savings of about $94,000 that I uh, put back into the budget, okay? And, and I'll talk about that a, a little bit more. So salaries for 13-14, uh, uh, basically salaries represent close to 60% of the o and budget. Uh, we have 55 employees, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, this increase is about 1.8% and uh, continues um, uh, control uh, of, of any overtime. Um, I, there is a slight increase in our custodial sub rate uh, from nine to $10, um, and there's a modest growth in wages and salaries. Um, at this point, the custodial sub rate is $9 an hour in, in the district, okay? That is the lowest in the suburban council, okay? And these are uh, custodial sub rates, so when I have a custodian that is out on vacation, personal, sick, uh, workers' comp, disability, whatever, we basically fill that, that spot. Um, depending upon the schools, sometimes we eat that vacancy at the larger schools, but for the most part, the work has to get done that night, so we will, we will hire a sub for that night. Um, the average of um, the, the 11 schools that we polled is about $10.80 per hour. So um, I had a list of about 50 subs that we used to call about a year, two years ago, and now that list is down to about 25 people. So it, it's been very difficult to get subs to fill vacancies, all right? So then there are times that we have to fill a vacancy and I can't get somebody, so I will have some custodians in that building stay a couple hours and do the bare necessities in that building and, and pay them overtime. We don't have a choice. So. Uh, basically, as I mentioned, that $94,000 of savings that, uh, that we found, um, I redeployed, as I'll call it throughout this presentation, about $7,000 into custodial subs, and that reflects a rate going from $9 to $10. So my budget this year is $65,000 for custodial subs, so I'm looking to increase it to about $72,000. Um, equipment. Uh, you'll see a very large jump for this year's uh, uh, proposal of $49,600. Um, because of our financial um, situations the past many years, um, ONM has not replaced any vehicles or bought any equipment since 2008 and 9. Okay, so uh, with this with this money, I'm looking potentially to um, purchase uh, a snowplow truck uh, and or uh, an auto scrubber uh, for the schools. Um, we rely on this equipment uh, quite a bit, um, and that's, that was my recommendation for equipment. Um, utilities, uh, this represents about a 5% decrease um, from uh, this existing year. Uh, this actually is the second year that I'm able to reduce utilities, um, and that's natural gas and, um, and electric pri primarily. Uh, I was able to reduce gas by about $41,000 and electric by about $29,000. Um, we are continuing to um, have the benefit of a fixed long-term contract with OC and BOCES, um, uh, which is the supply of, of the commodities, the gas and electric. In fact, for the 13th, 14th year, uh, the commodity hasn't changed at all in its pricing. Uh, contracted services and projects. Um, we are uh, redeploying some more of those savings into a line item called special projects, about $25,000. Uh, if the board recalls, uh, I was looking to replace 
or, or um, uh, take out some carpeting, some very old carpeting in Slingerlands and a number of classrooms and replace it with vinyl composite tile. Um, and then the second part of the projects um, uh, were um, about $11,000 for district-wide painting to start doing um, some painting in the district. Um, supplies, again, uh, looking to uh, take some of those netted savings um, and spend about $5,500 into a uniform line item. Uh, we have not bought uniforms for the custodial or maintenance staff since 2010-11. Um, as well, I was looking to put about $7,300, uh, $7, $7, which is materials for um, the gym floor refinishing. That is an in-house program that we do. So I'm, I'm proposing that we do all the floors that would, uh, would not be uh, touched uh, with the uh, proposed uh, bond. Uh, BOCES, um, one thing that's nice is that the services are remaining the same, which represents a one day a week safety specialist and um, our administrative fee for the OCM BOCES uh, consortium, utility consortium. And their prices actually went down this year. So overall, you're looking at about $5.2 million budget. Salaries and positions, um, no staff. No staff uh, level changes uh, for the 13-14 year. Um, last year we absorbed uh, a 1.0 FTE reduction in custodian, in a custodian, which was um, spread throughout um, Ellesmere, Glenmont, Hamagrill, O&M Transportation, and three hours here at, at the high school. Um, and what else is uh, included in this, and as, as I mentioned earlier, is that increase of custodial substitute rate uh, which will increase that line item by about $7,000. Um, that line item also has overtime, which um, I'm, I'm looking to be flatlined for next year as well. Um, this is a new line item, uh, capital outlay. Um, capital outlay program uh, was discussed a number of times during our facilities form. Uh, the New York State Ed Department uh, allows some projects to be included within my budget or the general fund and to be eligible for, for the building aid. Um, with public approval, that's usually part of uh, the budget vote in May, um, uh, this option offers a streamlined way to accomplish a project um, and receive the building aid. Um, there's a caveat that the project has to be at a single building. Um, so I guess, um, if the proposed uh, proposition is passed uh, in, in March, um, we might be able to scale this back, knowing that a number of the items uh, will be handled uh, by that, that proposition. Uh, but um, I guess we can revisit this option later on in, in the budget process and, and discuss it um, at that time and discuss uh, specific projects. Impacts uh, for prior uh, reductions. I, this is always kind of a tough one because uh, a lot of the reductions that, that I have seen over the years are difficult to, to quantify and to qualify, all right? Um, we had the, the, um, the one FD uh, custodian last year, um, and I, I guess what we've been finding is that uh, during break weeks, we're playing more catch up. We're doing more detailed cleaning during those break weeks that we can't typically do and we're used to doing uh, during uh, the regular school year. Um, I guess I need to compliment my staff for kind of stepping up during this time and, and risen to the challenges of, of wanting to keep the buildings as, as really as clean as possible and in good condition. So um, the other thing with, with a lot of these reductions to my department, you're not going to see an, an immediate um, uh, failure or, or uh, you'll see cumulative wear that's going to happen over the years. Um, if I don't buy a new vehicle, you might start to see a repair of that older vehicle. Repair costs start to increase and increase over the course of, of a period of time. So um, uh, I know one thing, it's not on this, but uh, either last year or a couple years ago, we did some benchmarking, some square foot benchmarking of our custodial staff here and the square footage that they may, uh, that they must uh, maintain compared to some national standards of, of that, that uh, type of cleaning. And um, we, we are still within an acceptable range um, that is noted and identified for school structures. So um, the energy manager position um, that has been lost uh, has been absorbed by uh, my department. 
Um, it was two days a week, and then it was one, and um, we've uh, fared very well, and I think a lot of that has to do with our energy management system and our control of our systems. So um, we are making do um, a lot with uh, what we have. Um, 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 I know with supplies, um, we are not stocking as much. Um, we may have to um, send somebody to uh, a, a vendor to get parts, um, but um, for the most part, um, we're continuing to make do. So um, potential reductions with the budget. Um, um, the board has the uh, discretion to, to look at those ads or that redeployment of items um, um, that I put back, which totaled about $94,000, which was the increasing of the sub rate, the equipment and the vehicle purchases, the special projects, the gym refinishing program, and the uniforms, all of that totaled up to about $94,000. Um, as well, we could um, reduce the capital outlay, which would be the first year, uh, actually, that we have proposed um, uh, this funding source. And with that, any questions? The vehicle you're, you're proposing to replace, I know you said you haven't purchased one since, nine, uh, since 2008. How old is the vehicle you're looking to replace? Um, we have an identity, I think it's a 96 plow truck. Um, we've actually utilized, because it's been a while, we've actually gotten some Suburbans from uh, transportation and put plows on them. I saw them out front this morning. You did see them out front, <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Um, we're possibly looking at that. We're actually re-looking at our program as well, uh, that maybe we, we might handle things a little bit differently. Um, the auto scrubbers that you see, these are the right around ones that, that really have helped with efficiency. Um, um, the ones that we have are, are quite old uh, and they're very expensive. Greg, could we get uh, figures from last year um, and I don't know, this year, either this year to date or this year projected, and um, then what's in the budget for overtime? You know, I, I thought you were going to ask that. I was going to prepare it and give it to you. Um, yeah, I, I have the same um, <clears throat> in fact. Um, numbers didn't really change much. Um, let me just see. I might have it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, we did very well with maintenance overtime this past year and, and we're doing well this year because of uh, primarily because of the lack of snow. Yep. Uh, much of the maintenance over time is done because of alarm drops or, or false alarm drops I should say in, in our buildings. Um, and then um, uh, other overtime as I mentioned uh, we have weekend uh, overtime um, for custodians to cover the buildings. We still have that Tuesday through Saturday shift. Um, but our use on Saturdays um, goes beyond 3.30, so we cover that with custodial overtime. We're seeing a lot of Sunday use now, primarily at this building that we haven't had in years past, so we can, we can run the numbers and I can get something to the board. Is that something then that you should look at? I mean, is there a way to change, you know, you have Tuesday through Saturday, I know it sounds awful, but you know, should there be a staff Wednesday to Sunday or something like that? Are there ways that we should be looking at that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if the numbers justify that yet. It's okay. more seasonal. You know, right now we're, we're big into the basketball, so I know BBC uses our facilities. Dolphins use our facility tremendously, pretty much the high school and the middle school. But that we, I don't think it's supported for the full year, okay, okay as opposed to Saturday use at the high school and in the middle school. But I, I can look at that. Okay. Do, do those clubs, clubs don't charge. they have to pay for um, custodial mm. staff to come in on weekends? Uh, yes, and all that money doesn't come back to me. <laughs> okay. But does so, the hourly uh, rate cover the overtime rate that we're charging? Or um, is it covering just the regular rate? Yeah, I think uh, when, when we, and I'm trying to think the last time that the rates were um, um, uh, changed, um, but uh, the rates, um, we, we looked at a number of schools and their rates, and knowing that we would have a number of groups in, I think the flat rate at $20, Judy? And remember, we have various rates depending on what, what section of, of the building yeah. is oh. being used. Different rooms have different rates. Um, depending on what type of a user group it is, there are different rates. That's structured so that we are intending to be close to breaking even in terms of covering those costs. 
it's never going to be exact every single year, depending on what that mix is. But if there is something that is causing custodial overtime, yes, we do have a separate rate that is billed we out do. for that as well, in addition to the base rental charge for the use of the building or fields or whatever it is. We have a new program this year through Schools Out. Uh, it's a vacation care program, and that is in um, at least one elementary school. Um, they, they kind of split it up amongst all the vacation periods. There are some days that it's double time in which they, they, they do pay for. Like a holiday? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, you mentioned that you were having trouble getting subs. I just wondered how you go about recruiting additional bodies. Um, we have put ads in the paper, in the spotlight. We have our <coughs> signs like transportation has, which we stick out. Um, a lot of it is word of mouth. Um, we, we, try to, we try to have that. Um, there's just, uh, I think at this point in time, uh, I think you can work at McDonald's and start at 975, okay? So um, the times aren't desirable. It's typically 3 o'clock on to 11 o'clock. Um, um, but we've seen that slow, slow decline over the years. But it's also declined because other districts are giving 10 bucks an hour. I have a question about the hundred thousand capital outlay. Is that uh, is this could be to either one of you? Is that what we were talking about during the bond process of starting a fund so that? Um, and so I know that it's offered up as a potential reduction, and you know, who who likes to cut anything? But um, I would really like to try to hold on to that as much as possible as we go through the discussions because that's going to help us deal with deferred maintenance down the road. Um, the other thing in terms of the, uh, the raise in the sub rate, I, I really support that because I think people who do work should be rewarded and that's such a low rate to begin with. So again, who, whoever likes to cut anything, but um, I think the sub rate should be raised to be at least quote competitive and it's barely a competitive rate to begin with. So that's my comments. Any other questions? Thank you. John's up. <laughs> John Mayo, our athletic no, director. No, I think she isn't. She are you doing? Are you doing this? Try to do it. You know. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'd like to welcome the community, Board of Ed, and uh, thank you for this opportunity to give you a, an <laughs> overview of the athletic budget. Um, I'd like to also start by just recognizing uh, a couple other students. Uh, Nate Kane <coughs> and Jamie Rosen uh, recently were Capital Zone Leadership Award winners for the Bethlehem Central School District. Each uh, school uh, has a female and a male rep, and they have a nice little banquet a couple weeks ago at the uh, Century Inn, and these are our two re recipients. Uh, this past fall, we uh, have three student athletes that will be attending a Division I school and participating at, at the Division I level. And that's Katie Nichols. She's going to be attending the University of Rhode Island for soccer. In the middle is Tara Teal. She's going to be attending uh, Manhattan University, also a soccer player on the far right. is Victor Fox. Uh, is going to be attending University of Maryland uh, to play golf. A little overview of our program, uh, basically, in participation, we have uh, 13 girls programs, we have 14 boys programs, and one co-ed, which is a middle school uh, swim program. We have 85 paid coaches, we have 65 teams. In the fall, we have 27 teams, we have uh, 19 in the winter, and we have 19 uh, in the spring. We have uh, 1,738 student participants in grades seven through 12. That's the total athletic participation and some students obviously will play more than one sport. Here's a breakdown of uh, students that are playing two sports per grade level and then three sports per grade level. Of the uh, at uh, 1738, we have 829 students that play single sports, uh, which is about 38% of our uh, 
total uh, student body from grades 7 through 12, which we're very proud of. We feel that's a very high number for the number of students we have here at Bethlehem. Here's a breakdown of the, uh, by gender, boys and girls per season. Fall, we have 335 boys, 318. Winter, we have 285, 186 girls. In the spring, we have 297 and 261. So it's, it's pretty even, pretty close across the way. The breakdown of our uh, sport teams per level, we have 28 varsity level teams, 18 JV level <coughs> teams, which is primarily made up of 10th, 9th graders. Some 9th graders who are uh, highly skilled may play at that level. And then we have uh, 11 freshman teams. We have 12 modified teams, which make up 65 interscholastic inter athletic teams here at Bethlehem Center. This is a breakdown of our, um, our uh, standard budget, uh, operating budget the last year, and basically what we are looking for in the athletic department for the 13-14 school year is a $10,000 increase in our official fees and trainers because uh, officials fees right now, they are at arbitration and uh, anticipate that that's going to be going up a little bit and uh, also other supplies where we can use to buy and purchase uniforms. Greg mentioned his uh, staff hasn't had uniforms. We have sport teams that haven't had uniforms in maybe seven or eight years here. And uh, uh, obviously, you know, we want to represent Bethlehem in a, the best fashion we can. And sometimes looking the part helps. You might play a little better as well. Um, coach's salary uh, is going to go up a little bit. Coaches here on staff will go up a step, which is uh, contractual. So that's you know going to see a little bit of an increase. Um, equipment is uh, basically as as low as we can go, and we've been at that at that 5,000 number for a, a while. Um, we got uh, one set of volleyball standards can cost like $2,800. Uh, not only does our our JV and our uh, varsity teams use the volleyball standards, but we also do allow the community. So um, again, like Greg said, the rental money doesn't go back to him and doesn't come back to athletics as well. So, you know, there's a few people that are using our equipment and the wear and tear is starting to, um, you know, take its toll on our stuff. Um, officials fees. Uh, again, we're, we're looking for a little bit of an increase because that, again, will be uh, probably settled in the fall or maybe even the winter, and we may have to pay retro pay to the officials. Um, the other supplies, we're looking for a little more there because we'd like to get, uh, again, purchase uh, some uniforms this fall <coughs> for some of our teams. John, actually, before you leave that yeah. slide, can I just say, the transportation costs are actually billed through tra transportation. Is that? That's, that's the standard amount that athletic is credited for. Right, but that amount is included in the transportation budget, budget and it right. represents the cost, the cost. of Got the it. drivers who are transporting the students right. to the various athletic contests. Right. Okay. But is it double counted then if it's here no. and it's in the transportation no. budget? No. No. It's here just to give you more of a sense of what the program costs are for athletics in terms so of the So the athletic budget dollars. really is the 539, not the 659. Correct. Correct. So it's cost versus budget. That's where it gets confusing because I know that when we saw some of these figures in advance, I knew the budget last year was around 500 something, and then yet we were seeing cost costs that were much ab above it. So I talked to Mrs. Kehoe, so that your your request for next year really is just the 539 166, even though there are additional costs that are billed through other units. Right. Other Got it. Because okay. yes. when when other slides start coming up, people will see the different numbers yeah. and. Got it. And John, that, that transportation is that we have a policy where we only pay for the minimum, like so many uh, uh, league games. League contests and sectional contests within the section. If it's a sectional team wins and they have to play a regional game, let's say in the Syracuse area, the section picks up that. 
But I'm saying it. there may be other additional costs that teams incur, but they pay themselves through both. Right, order. we'll get to that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We have since, that. Since we're asking on this slide, the officials fee and training you said that are an arbitration, what is the um, group? Is it a statewide group? Is it a suburban council? Is it a, who is it's who's a, the group that's negotiating? No, it's a sectional association. Sectional? Yeah. This is the total cost, um, which will include, you know, obviously the administration and uh, support staff for athletics, uh, and also salary plus their fringe benefits, uh, supervision for night and evening athletic contests, maintenance, um, uh, fall and winter, obviously, uh, Greg, uh, you know, his staff has to you know, mow and maintain manicure and line fields as well as uh, over the summer. They also work by reseeding and uh, aerating and doing things to prepare them for the uh, rejuvenation as much as we can for the fall. Uh, that also includes fringe benefits there. Uh, our coaching salary and benefits are also, uh, you know, there's stipend which is including as well as fringe benefits. Uh, equipment, again, it's only a $5,000 number. Officials fees, same as it was pre previous slide. Other supplies and membership, uh, that's uh, Suburban Council, Section 2, uh, different dues, that the uh, league, league dues that we have to pay to participate. Uh, subtotal there is 925626 uh, The transportation fee now here uh, obviously is including, um, you know, everything in terms of their fringe benefits, uh, non our uh, sectional play, and you know the total cost that uh, is really what's paid out from transportation. While we're on the slide, can I ask you about what is, because I noticed that when you gave us the uh, team by team breakdown, yep. and I realized the supervision of basketball games and soccer mm -hmm. games, what is supervision? I mean, I chaperones, I, uh, okay. ticket takers. Okay. I've never really noticed them at basketball games, but um, okay. Thank you. So again, like the other slide, some of these services are billed through other departments. Yes. Right. Yes. No. Um, this is very important slide right here. This uh, um, is booster contri contributions, and um, I can't speak enough uh, in terms of what our community does for our athletic programs and our student athletes. Um, we've been fortunate over the years to just have uh, you know, great support. Um, they Obviously, this is just from this year. Last year's figure I know is a little higher than that total right there, but these are the things from just this year that uh, has been donated and contributed uh, by our boosters to our athletic you know, program and our student athletes. <clears throat> Supplies, equipment, memberships, they pay fees and awards, uh, coaches' salaries and benefits, those are the two uh, track uh, positions that the uh, boosters have paid for, officials' fees for all non-league contests and scrimmages, transportation costs, uh, which includes yellow bus as well as a coach for any non-league uh, or um, scrimmage contest. And in total is 108,071. And again, we've been uh, fortunate to have such a, you know, a fine group of uh, community members and support throughout the years. This is just another way it's broken down. Uh, shows you in terms of our administration support, supervision, the whole picture, maintenance, coaches' salary, benefits, equipment, officials' fees, our trainer, other uh, supplies and memberships, and then the transportation. These are our membership uh, dues that we pay. This has not increased in the last probably five years. That stayed the same. Um, 
basically because of the uh, sensitivity that they've had towards uh, school districts and the budget issues that have been going on. So that's kind of been the same for the last five years. This is the other professional services here. Lifeguarding fees, uh, swim practice, there's got to be a lifeguard for modified, both boys and girls swim practices. Health, New York State Health Department requires a lifeguard on deck. Okay, those are things that were added to the athletic budget and we were never asked for an increase when they were added. So those are things that have been, you know, um, given to us to, you know, obviously take care of, but, you know, we've kind of just absorbed it. This slide right here uh, compares the apples to apples in the suburban council. As you can see, um, you know, it does not include uh, transportation, but we are number seven out of the 12 schools, and we've been able to compete uh, competitively in the council with, you know, what we've been able to work with. Um, we've, uh, you know, we've had some great great coaching staff and we also have some great athletes here but um, you know uh, being seventh uh, obviously is you know something that uh, I think we can uh, you know increase to, to help our our chances and put us in a situation where we can be competitive uh, you know with every sport at every level But John, that's not based on how many sports they have or how many athletes they have or anything like that. I mean, those no, other teams, those other schools could have much bigger athletic programs because they, they have do. more kids. They, or uh, I, I mean, don't think they. It's kind of hard to, to. Yes, it would be nice to be higher up. I agree, but it's hard, kind of hard to compare. It's not really apples to apples. It's, um, I don't think there's too many more uh, uh, districts that have maybe one or two levels more than us. Well, one thing I had asked for before, and I don't think Mr. DeMaio had enough time to do it, is the cost per athlete. You know, it's a sense, if you have, if you know the size of the programs, the number I of think students. That, so we, got the question. we gave them yeah. that, didn't Last we? Year the year before, no, no I comparative think across the district. Because oh, okay. in a way, it, it, as you were saying, if they, if, for example, so Shen had Shen twice Shen the number of athletes or whatever, yeah. then proportionally it looks like we're a right. seventh, but we actually may be, we don't know. If they have right. so many more students, athletes, they may need more coaches, they may need more whatever. But actually, Shen has, doesn't do modified sports, right? No, yeah. some. Well, I mean, I, they do, they do. Yeah. I have, I no, I'm just saying a better unit of measure it's or comparison is cost per, so if they have the same number of athletes and yet their budget was a million, then we have a sense that yes, we are yeah, actually no, placed low. lower, but if they had the, uh, twice the number of students, it's just the better unit of comparison mm -hmm. would be for example, would be cost per athlete, which we Not want to assume. Not though, because it's the coaches' salaries. You have a coach that's been coaching 25 years yeah. in four or five sports, and you have a coach that's been coaching for three years, it's going to skew it. And if yeah. you put 25 kids on your baseball team instead of 16, yeah. they don't play. Right, right. But yeah. it's going to decrease their numbers, so they're going to look like their cost per athlete is less, whereas I hope you take into account playing. Sure. We name kids and not just put these massive teams in our Well, if you actually look at the team between some of our sports, cost per athlete are very high because of the coaching salaries and the number right. of kids. And that would, but that skews all of that. Yeah, but so, so you assume that the skew is with everyone. But I'm not sure this tells us a whole Much, lot. Yes, I it's, it's but yeah. I think in terms of the number of yeah. programs that we offer is as many as, as Shen will offer. We offer 65 levels. They are probably maybe even less because they don't have as many modified sports. We are one of the higher uh, uh, schools. I mean, we offer more at our school than probably most of the suburban schools <laughs> per level and uh, per teams. Um, if obviously if you know uh, reductions are in the future 
Um, some of the s suburban schools have uh, gone based on either uh, interest in the sport or you know, budget uh, issues have gone to three levels per sport. In other words, teams that had four levels, they've dropped either uh, modified or they've dropped the freshman level. Most teams are, are, are schools have been dropping the freshman level the last couple of years. Averill Park, Burn Hills, um, as well as Mohanison. How many sports do we have at four levels right now? Um, we got football, soccer, soccer. So I have it right here. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Well, I can I can label it. Oh, she's getting it. Oh, she's getting it. Okay. Sorry. John, is that something that like the athletic directors get together and talk yeah, about? Yeah, we've discussed like, we've discussed it as a league, because if you a teams or a school is going to keep freshmen, but no one else, you know, maybe there's only two or three other schools. You know, so of all the other schools, we've we've talked about going to a seven, eight, nine modified. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's eight. eight according to the thing. We have eight. Eight. So, eight. so you're working eight. with the eight. other schools yeah. with that. Yeah, that's been so a discussion. So even if it's not a budget item, right? To say like it may just be a because league. there's no competition, it may be a league issue, right? Okay. When are those kind of decisions made generally in budget? Uh, right or? now, they're in the process of talking with their, uh, you know. Superintendents and board of eds, and you know, I know Niski's South County are going through some issues. Is there? I mean, you, you said there's discussions going on, but is someone saying, you know, looking at it and saying, well, we should all look at freshmen, we should all yeah. look at modified or something? I mean, well, that's what I mean. We're talking about going with just a seven, eight, nine mod. Okay, and no freshmen. Then. Yeah, no yeah. freshmen. Okay. A better freshman could play maybe JV. Uh, skilled freshmen could play up. For all sports, you're talking about that. Uh, for, for all eight, sports that have, that have. For what? For, for all sports that have. that have, you know, four levels. Because most of the ones that we have at four levels, most of the other schools have at four levels too, or no? Yeah, most do. Yeah, but that's most what he's looking at because yeah. others may have to cut also yeah. at this point. I think. Well, I guess I would really encourage you know you and if Tom or whoever is appropriate to really participate in those conversations to. Make mm -hmm. sure that it's going to be what we want, but also, you know, that we kind of design how we think it would work best. Um, um, if if that something like that's going to happen, let's make sure that we're part of it, part of the decision. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. See, so I think last year when we were talking about reducing level of sports, I thought, and I may not be remembering this correctly, we were going to leave it up to the AD because we weren't de designated the level. We were saying look at each individual sport. And see, right. That was with discussion think, with the coaches too. Right. Okay. Yeah. I think that's kind of the one that says it doesn't just say w that it's which level all modified and or it all is. Fresh. It's getting yeah. together with all the right, other right, 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 councils, right. which sounds like they're doing. Although I think last year part of our discussion was eliminate one level, even if it was a three-level sport, to maybe only two. Yeah. That was, so that was, where this seems to be focused like just on the four levels. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was down. Last uh, impacts that we've had in athletics the last three or four years up here. We've lost all, obviously, non-league contests and scrimmages. Um, two positions in the indoor track, uh, gymnastics, the ice hockey. Uh, they've been, uh, you know, able to come up with their ice rental, which is, you know, not easy as well for them. Uh, bowling rental, um, you know, we're fortunate that Marv Sons, our head coach, doesn't charge us, and he's uh, one of the owners of the lanes. Uh, and our golf fees and our cheerleading, which is a club. Do you know, uh, John, of the non-league contest transportations that were cut, mm -hmm. how many actually happened anyway because of the boosters? Uh, I, think I mean, have. like half of them? I'm not even, I'm just kind of talking roughly, or um, boosters. most of them, or very few, or? Well, they won't, the varsity level will have the uh, scrimmages. Freshmen and modified haven't had any scrimmages. At so it, so when boosters that had to cover. If we have one, we hold it at Bethlehem, where a team will travel to us, 
and some have even paid for the uh, officials fees because so, they want to get scrimmages. So when that cut was made, really what the impact has been is on the freshman and modified sports, but the right. varsity sports, the boosters, the boosters have stepped up, up the and varsity. picked it up for that. About it's about difficult about to look. 18,000 is what is traveling. at least recorded right now. But is it? In transportation <laughs> alone. But we don't know what the right. total would have been. I mean, what right. percentage is that? Right, but there's right. also fees on top of the transportation and things like that, right? Or well, that's just the transportation right, cost right, that right. they recorded. Yeah. The no, I'm just curious there. what, you know, because yeah, because this fees what right impact there. it really had. Um, I have a couple questions with the gymnastics, because um, I know that was a hot ticket item last year, and the boosters wanted to support, mm -hmm. but there was like only four other teams that they were competing against. Has that changed? No, there's still four. There's still four, and there'll be four next year. Uh, at this moment, yeah. I know Gilderland's. Um, you know, thinking about maybe making a move there, but nothing's fine. Okay, just as long as we're on top of that too. In the budget that you have presented here, is it the same that it was last year where we pay part and the boosters pay part of that sport? Which sport? Gymnastics. Gymnastics. Um, yeah, this year. Kind of look what no, for next year I'm talking about yes. the budget that you've yes. proposed. Yes. Okay. It's kind of similar to the hockey, right? Correct. Right. That we just kind of kept it that way. Yep. And John, the, the cheerleading, I know that went from a sport to a club, mm -hmm. but what kind of savings was there? Because they still have to have an Well, there were two salary. coaching salaries that we paid for. Uh, now we pay uh, a stipend, which is, Scotty, can you answer that on the club level? As an advisor, about about I think it was about $10,000 savings. Two both seasons. Was that two coaches because there was two teams, or who was? Yeah, it's coaching salaries. Right. Because we for don't two travel. Teams, for two where teams. Where now it's one. Right. So it, if it was ten thousand, it might go down. Save three coaching salaries, basically. Okay. I just know that. Um, well, I have background information too, but I don't know if it was last year or the year before. A couple of the girls came to a meeting and were really upset that right. it, you know, did go from a. Uh, sport to a club and one of the things was the football and I know that I think it was Chuck that said that they would be able to do the first game but it still didn't happen and I think it was just a miscommunication thing because Chuck retired and Scott and, mm -hmm. but I know that was one of their issues and a safety reason that they wanted it to be a sport and the competition reason. Right. I used to have a comment on one of the slides. You don't have to go back to it but the athletic programs and participation where you were talking about the 1700 student participants just in case someone looks at the slides and say wait because some of the kids play more than one sport it's really 1738 opportunities right correct right because some of the kids would be quote double counted right. so that it really is the opportunities to over, participate to participate right Got it. do we know what percentage say in the high school or the middle school kids are playing 38 percent roughly I'm sorry, I didn't know that was the last slide. Um, anybody else have any questions? Okay. Do any community members have questions for either Judy, Greg, or John? Usually I stop in between, but I didn't do it that this time. Just. Okay. Thank you. All right. Oh, we're, boy, we'll get out of here early tonight. We'll no, go back. Oh, that's right. <laughs> You'll get out of here. Oh, plus we have the agenda. <laughs> 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 the uh, I can do that. Okay, right? Yeah, I'll do that at the end. If, if you can, oh, just yeah. so that everybody knows, because we, we posted this last year as well as part of this presentation. Oh, this, okay. this is what the Board of Education already has in front of them, and this is what uh, Mr. DeMeo was referring to that gives the rough total cost of programs in each of those lines, salaries, benefits, officials, transportation, supervision fees, uh, costs, 
And then there's also a breakdown by program or total program of cost for each level per student, uh, as well as with and without transportation. And as you go through, it goes through each season, and then it also does a summation. That's where the, I think it was the 1.1 million total cost. That means it comes from several parts of our budget, but that's what we have tracked at this point is the total cost of offering our program in athletics at this point. Uh, it still is a work in progress, but we want people to be aware that that will be posted as well so that if you refer to the budget presentation, you have this as a document too. Here's the agenda. Okay. Um, so we're on to finance. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following finance actions item A. Is there a motion? So, so moved. There a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That carries. Professional personnel, it is recommended that the Board of Education include the following instructional staff action items A through G. So moved. Your second? Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I have a question if I could. Um, the last three that are listed as unpaid assistant, um, are they paid? They're not paid by the booster clubs, are they? No, they're volunteers. They're volunteers? volunteers. So we approve them for what purpose? For liability reasons? Uh, it's required if they're going to be working with the students, students in a direct coaching capacity. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That carries. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following support staff action items A through D. Support personnel. So moved. Because I'm a person. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And I think I have an E here. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry about that. So A through D, or A through E. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That carries. And correspondence for action. It's recommended that the Board of Education approve the following correspondence, ac correspondence action item A through D. Is there so a move? Second? Second. Any discussion? Um, I started on the, um, the student activities fund management policy, just a couple of grammatical things, but I, I didn't get through it, so I'll send it to Yeah, Cindy. if you send it right to Cindy, we'll do that between first and second. Okay. Uh, just building on what the board discussed the last time that we had policies, uh, I'll let Mike speak to it. There are no major substantive changes to this. It was more review and updating some titles and making sure we complied with appropriate accounting practices. Okay. Okay, and I think I'm just, I was going to bring it up at the end of the meeting, but because it's on here for the election for March 12th for the bond vote, I know I received a letter just if we can make sure that if people are not in the books, mm -hmm. um, that they're asked for some type of identification or yeah. whatever they need to yeah. show that they're residents. And maybe we could announce here the um, we absentee can. ballot process, you could. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we can also put out an SNN to that fact, too. If you are not registered in our books, please bring appropriate photo ID as well. Uh, there is an absentee ballot process in for the vote that takes place on March the 12th. Uh, you and uh, let our election inspector over here, uh, uh, a, a talent of many hats, go ahead and explain the process so that we hit all the dates. If a voter is unable to be in town on the day of the vote, they have a right to apply for an absentee ballot, and that application requires that they state that they are, in fact, an eligible voter. Obviously, you need to be 18, you need to be a resident of the district within the last 30 days, um, U.S. citizen, etc. You have to demonstrate that you're meeting all of those requirements, and then you also state the reason why you are unable to be present. Um, once that has been certified and reviewed as appropriate, we then mail out the absentee ballot um, that they cast their vote. And as long as it is mailed back to us and received by 5 p.m. on the day of the election, um, the vote is counted at the end of, after the polls close at 9 p.m. Received on that day or postmarked on the election Received. Day? It has to be received by 5 p.m. on the day of the vote. That's okay. the same for the general budget vote and for any of the votes that we hold. And the deadline to request that is Monday, is that correct? It's a week before yeah. the vote. Right. 
and that's yeah. to allow ample time right, to right, right. review so that would be it and send it Tuesday, out. Tuesday, wouldn't it? Because the vote's on Tuesday, seven days would be Tuesday. It would be. Yeah, but actually in all the publications, I think it says it's Monday, so. Okay. Uh, we can check. I think I've got yeah. it here. But mm -hmm. I mean, our big thing is we want to make sure that people get the information. Okay. We will be sending out. Not we have the highlights already out, but we also will be sending out a one-day flyer reminder uh, so that every resident uh, will be reminded. We hope people will come out and just participate in the vote. That is our our number one educational function: is that we become an informed community by participating, uh, and that's what we're hoping to do here. I believe as a board. Uh, and has always been the board's intention. So, okay. And uh, you tr you train the um, people that are going to be running the inspectors. Any who are not experienced <laughs> poll inspectors, <laughs> yes, we do provide the but training for sure them. That so that well, because we're counting on them to do the proper verifications if it's any new voter coming in. So yes, they are trained. Okay. Thank and you. supervised. <laughs> uh, and I just wanted to make sure that. People are aware that they don't have to be registered voters. They just have to right. meet all the qualifications. Correct. They do not have to be registered to vote. Mm -hmm. the they, the district. Yeah, yeah, the biggest thing, they must be a resident of mm -hmm. the district, and they must be a domicile of New York, not any other state, but a domicile. That's the big thing. Those Domiciled are in the Bethlehem in Central state. School District. Right. Yeah. And a U.S. citizen. I just know my right. husband's a resident of England, so. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure, I think Laura was providing clarification, I'm not sure if it has to be a picture or photo yeah, It has ID. to be photo ID. No, but we can mm -hmm. bring in like a utility insurance. bill that shows it was addre it was yep. addressed to your house and mm -hmm. usually, and that's yep. right. So just right. make sure we have, you know, the criteria. Yeah. We have written procedures on all of that, so it is yeah, available. Okay. I just, you know, I Judy just gets very sore feet that day. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I received a letter just to state that some people were not asked, you know, weren't in the book, and then they were not asked for make sure we follow that okay any other discussion all in favor aye. 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 any opposed that carries and recognition of visitors on a non-agenda item anyone sure okay who's Did, talking i can't hear you Did dave can you just announce just your name for the camera and stuff you have to come to us he's going to come We, we had to, we did not make any decisions tonight. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it does. You're right. It does. It kind of says just, oh, that's from March 6th. But we won't be making decisions. I don't think we'll be making decisions. We'll be discussing. Believe me. And if, and if we did make any, if they would not be voted on, they'd be tentative anyway. So. Yeah. Anyone else? Can I just say, when you announce the next meetings, could I ask that, um, for example, the uh, the one for next week, if possible, because I realize people may not have time to do that, um, if the amounts given by the, I call them booster clubs of the schools, like the PTAs and PTOs, also be recognized just in terms of amounts, because I know it's it's good for us to see how much the, P, having been a former PTA president, um, how much they actually are contributing. We know that we accept the donations for the, when they purchase things, but if, if possible, if the amounts given to um, schools. We have a president's council next week, so I can ask them if they can get us the information as quickly yeah, as possible. Correct answer that, but okay. Yeah, yeah. No, but, they, uh, they've been very good about it. <laughs> no, so, well, maybe, maybe the record keeping has gotten better from what I was there, but uh, and also I know they're uh, like the BMA and all the rest, you know, if they could you know, be recognized for the amount that they donate to support our programs, that would be great. Okay, so future meetings. Um, next Wednesday, March 6th. Tuesday will be the facilities bond vote. Um, that's all day from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the high school, right? Uh, at yes. the high school. Correct. So we encourage people to get out there and vote. Uh, Wednesday, March 20th, 7 p.m., a regular board meeting. And each board <coughs> meeting will have different programs that we'll be talking about. And then April 10th, well, that's Six o'clock. No, that's Bosey's annual that's meeting. That's not here. Should anything? Uh, yes. Not until March. Isn't it? The, the retreat. The public meeting. The, the retreat is that we're doing. Um, a retreat. I think we we have to just at least announce it. Okay. March. Yeah, we'll announce the, that the next one. I don't think Cindy caught that and put that on. So. Okay. And I think. And, and after the polls close, the vote will occur right. 
at the the tally. The tally, the tally the public right there. To come in. Absolutely. Yep. Um, we do have to go into executive session, so is there a motion? I move we go into executive se session and we do not anticipate any action following. And, and the reason for the executive session is continual personnel discussion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, participation in government students, come on up and sign oh. out. You get the treat for coming early and not waiting till June. <laughs> <laughs> for your meeting.